House Republicans have decided to promote a symbolic bill to intentionally brand themselves as enemies of Americans who are so poor that they rely on SNAP benefits in order to put food on the table. Now, the reason why I say it's a symbolic bill is because it's being promoted by House Republicans who control the House. But it's unlikely to pass the Senate. And more importantly, if it somehow does pass the Senate, Biden would veto it. But nonetheless, this is a way of communicating to the American people what the priorities of House Republicans happen to be. And this is it. It is not economic populism. It's doing away with the little bit of help that some Americans rely on for sustenance. Now, more than a dozen House GOP lawmakers are proposing legislation that would impose harsh work requirements to obtain federal food aid. Now, let me be clear. Right now, there are already work requirements. But what House Republicans want to do is expand the work requirement standards to a larger group of people. They're expanding the age group, okay? So Representative Dusty Johnson's legislation, which currently has 14 Republican co-sponsors, would broaden the SNAP work requirement age bracket for able-bodied adults without dependents to 18 to 65, adding 16 years to the current age ceiling of 49. Yeah, so- That's what they want to do. By the way, um, sorry, Jake, sorry to interrupt you, but let's just keep it real. What do you think it's like to be an unemployed 55 year old looking for a job? Just think about that, because that never gets talked about, whether we're discussing the uh, social security issue, right? Where they keep wanting to increase the social security age you know, to 65, 67. In some cases, as Ron DeSantis proposed when he was a member of the House of Representatives, he wanted to increase it to age 70. All right, you're 60 years old. Who's gonna hire you at 60? Are we gonna pretend like the ageism in the job market doesn't exist? Yep. So guys, uh, the ostensible reason for this is, um, oh, we gotta cut the deficit. It turns out deficit is gigantic. Now first, let's just acknowledge why is the deficit gigantic? Um, Donald Trump put a $2 trillion hole in it. But by the way, uh, George W. Bush put a $6 trillion hole in it. These are all tax cuts for the rich. And Obama and Biden made both of those, made the Bush hole way larger by making those tax cuts for the rich permanent. So don't forget what Obama and Biden did because mainstream media will never tell you. It'll be buried in a tiny little paragraph if you could ever find it again. So um, now, uh, so if you cared about the deficit though, and the Republicans weren't lying, there's tons of stuff to cut in the budget. I mean, we just told you Congressional Budget Office, nonpartisan, they said the Pentagon has a hundred billion dollars in total waste. I mean, they just, they already know what the waste is. They're like, there's that hundred billion dollars that we're throwing in the garbage, right? You're like, yeah, go ahead, throw it in the garbage. Oh, that guy, get back to work. You 59 year old, get back to work, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna starve in the streets and not get any food. Go back to work for the $125 a month that you might receive from SNAP benefits. I'm not even exaggerating. Let's let's actually go to that graphic because if you're wondering what the priority is, like what Republicans have decided to target in order to cut spending. Let's go to the last graphic here. This is what SNAP benefits look like today, today. So if you are one person, you're not making enough money in order to provide food for yourself. If you do get qualified for SNAP benefits, you'll get, if you're lucky, $195 a month. A month, a month, a month. Okay. Just let that sink in, guys. Okay, so let's say you're on the right, you're conservative. You're a traditional conservative, not like something outrageous or anything like that. But traditional conservatives have said, look, I think it's important for that guy to go back to work and have a work ethic, etc. Right? I, we can debate that, we can debate that. But if you really care about the deficit, this is gonna bring down the deficit by about two nickels, right? Here, I'll give you another example. There's $16 billion in just oil and gas, not all energy, and not all fossil fuels, just oil and gas, $16 billion in subsidies. Wait, those are the most profitable companies in the history of the world. Why do they need $16 billion from us? Nope, they won't cut it. Yeah, because they won't cut it. poor people don't have a lobby for representing Exactly, them. guys. So look, now let me give you something more depressing. I read the article, This they're gonna get their way. Because this is how Democrats signal that they're in on it. They will say like, oh, we have yet to come up with a plan for how to fight back on this. 
This is going to be very difficult to fight back on. Why is it difficult? They're saying, oh, let's negotiate over raising the debt limit. That's a bluff, and you all know it's a bluff. There's no way you're gonna destroy the stock market and have all the Republican donors angry. So the Republicans do a fake bluff. The Democrats know for absolute certain that it's a fake bluff and would destroy the Republican Party if they actually delivered on that bluff. But the Democrats play along and they're like, "Oh, we are so worried that you are going to do that." So, oh, oh I guess we there's nothing we could do. We're going to have to cut this program and leave all the subsidies for our beloved corporations alone. Here's what's going to happen. This is this is my because I I was curious. I'm like with Republicans wanting to brand themselves as economic populists, considering the fact that they know this bill is not going to pass and that it's a symbolic bill, like what's the real agenda here? And it hit me. So as I shared with you, they want to expand the work requirement to individuals up to the age of 65. I don't think they're gonna get that particular that particular ask, but I think they're doing this to essentially desensitize voters and Democratic lawmakers. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go to graphic three here because there was an earlier suggestion, earlier proposal by Rick Scott. So Senator Rick Scott reintroduced a bill in January that would raise the age for food assistant work requirements by a decade to 59, okay? So that's, I guess, a little, a little less extreme. And I guess that's what the compromise is gonna be. I think they're gonna go with what Rick Scott is proposing in the Senate. And the argument, the, the, the cover story will be, well, at least we didn't expand the age to 65. 100%. So guys, uh, I'm gonna show you two uh, lines here from the political piece on this that show you the Democrats have already surrendered and this is all theater, right? And because it's not a surrender, they both wanna do the same thing. They don't wanna take the money from corporations. Or the rich, hey, populist Republicans, Oh, Donald Trump and Republicans are so populist. Have they proposed one cent from the rich or from corporations? Not one cent, not one cent. Have the Democrats said, well, all right, then I'm not gonna raise the debt ceiling until you raise taxes on corporations. Of course not, of course not, this is all a joke. So here's the two, there's many of these quotes, but I'll just give you two. House Democrats have yet to mount a coordinated response, raising concerns in the caucus about whether they can fend off likely GOP attacks on the program during the negotiations over the debt limit. When they leak things like that to Politico, that means, oh, we will not be able to fend it off. Golly gee, how would we fight back? Would we say there's 16 billion dollars in oil subsidies? We would never want to say that. I don't know how we would fend it off. If you can't fend this off, you guys are losers. But again, mainstream media will never tell. Last one. On the other flank of the party, they say the fight over the federal anti hunger programs could end up squeezing vulnerable members who represent districts Biden won in 2022. Okay? Hey, remember, if you do anything that isn't pro corporate, that's going to hurt your vulnerable members, Democrats. And they never explain why, because then you won't be able to raise enough bribes to win in that district. So, guys. Corporate media, corporate Democrats, corporate Republicans, they're all part of the same team. And we live under corporate rules, so they're very likely gonna cut this aid. Final thing is from the ironic populace of the Republican Party. What do they wanna do? They're taking everything from the middle class. Everything is from the middle class. So what do they want the middle class to get angry at? The people that are taking the great amount of the money, which is up top. No, up top is the guys that fund their campaigns. The guys they take bribes from. So they want the middle class to get angry at the people down below. So they're like, don't look at the oil companies. Look, oh, that guy in Florida or Arkansas, he didn't work enough, he's a bum. Get mad at him, get mad at him and take away his food. Literally take away his food. Are we taking away food from oil executives? Come on, system is a joke. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.